in, in previous uh, video, we talked about how we can secure the repository for our AKS, that is uh, ACR repository. Uh, so as I mentioned in the uh, second video of the series, we are going to pick each and every component and we're gonna secure it. And in the end, we'll summarize everything. The last video of this series, all the best practices will consolidate together. So in this video, we are going to talk about uh, cluster security. We're not going into the pod network nodes. We're talking about only the cluster right now. So let me quickly share my screen so that I could uh, uh, show you and it will help us to understand better, yeah? This is the same architecture that uh, we've been following for AKS. We talked about this ACR in the previous video, right? This one. We secured this one. We talked about a little bit of this one. Now we are going to talk about the AKS cluster here. Okay. Then we'll talk about the nodes and then pods, then the network in the upcoming videos. And in the end, as I said, we'll consolidate all the best practices and put down together in one single video. Okay. But these are the conceptual and the understanding videos. So that's why we have to. Uh, learn it separately. So the very first thing is uh, AKS gives us the managed master node and the nodes that we have the access to, but for the master, we do not. And AKS gives us the uh, public, uh, because all the managed services are, are public, right? Similarly, our cube API has the public IP. So we need to secure that. So what we can do for that, uh, the very first thing is, <clears throat> we can restrict the access or we can make it absolutely private because each AKS cluster has its own single talented, dedicated Kubernetes master to provide the API server, scheduler, etc. And by default, the, the Kubernetes API server uses a public IP address, as I said, and a fully qualified domain name. So what we can do uh, for master, what we are going to do, we restrict the access, whitelist the IPs or create private cluster. You can, yes, of course, you heard me correctly, you can create the private cluster as well. Okay, now the second thing uh, that we have been covering uh, many times, but that's a very important thing, which is uh, first we're going to manage the access through the whitelisting the IP address. The second, using RBAC. Now, recommendation is don't use the cube RBAC separately. Let's integrate Azure AD and utilize the bindings and manage the permission centralized, of course, with the principle of least privileged, right? That's how we can secure the access. The third one is it is always recommended to run your workload on the latest version because this is this comes with the features and of course saving the vulnerabilities as well. Now, if you're not running on the latest version, uh, Kubernetes or AKS provides you an orchestration tool by which you can upgrade your AKS cluster easily. And this upgrade orchestration include both Kubernetes master and agent components. And this, this upgrade happens just like rolling updates, code in and drain, that's what they call it. And you can easily upgrade your cluster without uh, hampering your workload. Then uh, the other part is, uh, I think this would be the last one for the cluster, which is we need to we need to always enable the master component logs. Yeah, AKS master components logs, which is very beneficial to you. And if you're not going to enable everything, you must enable API server log, Cube API server log, and Cube audit. This will give you a uh, lot more information that can help us. So this is a small video where we are trying to uh, secure our cluster. In the next video, 
will go with the another component. Well, thank you for watching and you have a good day. Let's learn something new in next video because we already learned for this video. Take care.